This is Sam. He's going to show you how to collect a moisture sample. Step 1. In your test kit, you will have input fittings that look like this. So first, connect the input fitting to the flow section, which is here. Starting with the 200 orifice, make sure you can maintain a steady pressure in the range of 4 to 6 psi. Now, you will open the charging lead or gas source valve located here and blow out residual moisture in the lines for five minutes. While that is happening, locate the data sheets behind the foam lid in your test kit. Grab your data sheet and your moisture tube. Record the moisture tube number located here under section Moisture Sample Data. On the additional information line on the data sheet, record the port location. Close the valve and connect the complete unit to the air source. Step 2. Now go ahead and slowly open the valve until a steady pressure in the range of 4 to 6 psi is on the pressure gauge on the Champion 35 flow section. Record the exact pressure on the data sheet under section Moisture Sample Data. Step 3. Grab the moisture tube and remove the red caps. Find the end marked Insert Other End. Carefully break the glass tip off this end by inserting it into the hole on the side of the tube fitting and gently apply sideways pressure. Then, break the other tip off the same way. Make sure you break both ends. Step 4. Without delay, insert the proper end of the moisture tube vertically into the tube fitting. Pass the O-ring until it bottoms out. Step 5. Begin timing the test as soon as the tube is in place. Do note that the flow is in process. Use this chart for optimum times and pressures. It is important that these times be used for corresponding pressures. Step 6. Once you've finished collecting the moisture sample, be sure to indicate the length of color change on the datasheet drawing of the moisture tube. Put the red caps on both ends of the moisture tube and return the tube to the foam holder. Step 7. You've just completed the moisture sampling procedure. If you aren't doing any additional sampling, turn off the charging lead or air source valve and disassemble the sampling equipment. Put each part back in your kit. If you're doing additional sampling, return to the other sampling instructions and perform those tests. Check that the data sheet has been filled out. Step 8. The final step is to ship back the data sheets and kit to TRI Air Testing. Shipping instructions are included in your kit. After shipping the kit back, there's nothing left to do except wait for the results. You will get a reminder when it's time for your next air test. For any questions and additional support, go to airtesting.com to contact us.